to a garden paradise. It is the divine drama, beginning with Baha'u'llah's visits here and the revelation of the Tablet of Carmel, setting forth the vision of the mountain's future grandeur. Abdul Baha, at the behest of his father, brought the remains of the Bab. with the soul-stirring vibrations of an ancient chord. Revered from biblical antiquity as the nest of the prophets, a mountain of refuge and peace, a place where time seemed to stand still. So it was when Baha'u'llah first set foot on Mount Carmel on August 31, 1868, en route to his prison cell across the bay in the old fortress of Akka. So what has happened on this mountain to turn her wild and thorny slopes into a garden paradise. It is a divine drama, beginning with Baha'u'llah's visits here and the revelation of the Tablet of Carmel, setting forth the vision of the mountain's future grandeur. Abdul Baha, at the behest of his father, brought the remains of the Ba from Persia and entombed them in this modest structure. The work was left to Shoghi Effendi, who over the 36 years of his ministry gave form to the vision for Carmel, acquiring land, erecting the superstructure of the Shrine of the Bab. in preliminary form both the ark and the terrace gardens and constructing the first of the buildings on the ark itself. Today, this is the heart of Mount Carmel. On August 31, 1987, the Universal House of Justice announced that the way is now open for the Baha'i world to erect the remaining buildings on the ark and complete the 19 terraces of the Shrine of the Ba. Hussein Amanat, architect for the buildings on the Ark, assembled his team in Canada to work on the architectural designs for the Center for the Study of the Text, the Archives Extension, the International Teaching Center, and the International Baha'i Library. Fadri Bars Satba, fresh from the completion of the widely acclaimed Lotus Temple, the Baha'i House of Worship of the Indian Subcontinent, was named architect of the terraces and project manager of the Mount Carmel Baha'i projects. The beauty of the gardens and the dominance of the gardens would be always kept. And the buildings are really uh, elements to decorate the gardens. They are pavilions in the gardens. The seat of the Universal House of Justice was designed to last at least 500 years and has been praised as the highest quality building to be constructed in Israel in modern times. The institution that takes counsel in its central chamber is created through the world's first truly global democratic election process. Founded upon universal participation by all the diverse kindreds and peoples of the earth, it is a unique process, completely free of the fractious clamor of partisan politics, carried out in the spirit of prayer, love, and dignity. The construction was divided into seven major phases. Phase one began at the very heart of the mountain with a detailed analysis of the long-term preservation requirements of the Shrine of the Bab and the main terrace upon which it stands. Phase two commenced on June 17 with massive excavations that would take years to complete. The material excavated for the building was used to even out the contours of the terraces below the shrine. This 30-meter high retaining wall is the largest construction element in the entire project. For two years, powerful drills bored up to 22 meters in the deep bedrock, setting rock anchors, securing the mountainside so that the buildings will be protected from the tremendous pressures of Carmel's shifting geological formations. The 
the exhilarating echoes of the Second Baha'i World Congress convened in New York City in November 1992 and connected to Mount Carmel by a live satellite link were still fresh as work began on Phase 3. Creating the Eastern Cavity to cradle the International Teaching Center required a different approach due to the proximity of the access road to the seat of the Universal House of Justice. The work began on terraces 15 through 19 near the top of the mountain with the bulk of the material from the excavation below being used to create the needed symmetry. Sculpting a mountainside is a challenging and difficult engineering task. The slopes are unforgiving and any error is potentially disastrous. By 1994, work had opened up the mountain to the fullest possible extent. Even the ark itself was disrupted as a service and pedestrian tunnel was constructed under the main path and stairs to connect all the buildings. Hatskinot Avenue was the main thoroughfare for traffic on Mount Carmel. Phase six required lowering the roadway by five meters to accommodate the large bridge of Terrace 11. The excavation was managed in carefully planned steps, lowering the road lane by lane in order to keep traffic flowing through this vital transportation artery. Simultaneously, on the uphill side of the road, even more excavations were required, creating space for the new Office of Public Information, and construction on the last phase of the Mount Carmel projects immediately began. It was the last major construction activity and served to link the terraces with the city projects on Ben Gurion Avenue and the Templar Colony. One by one, these new pavilions on the Ark were completed and occupied. The Center for the Study of the Texts exudes a special warmth and dignity. The circular portico cradles a sunken garden and central fountain, creating an atmosphere of cool tranquility and the endless interplay of light and shade. French stone walls, red granite floors, glass balustrades grace the entrance hall of this seat of an institution for Baha'i scholars. It is sitting against the mountain. It is half buried into the rock. And despite this situation, it has natural light for all the rooms. And you can see how the light comes down through the light wells into every room of this building. Next door, the Archives Extension Building is the working center for archival collection and preservation of the original tablets and sacred relics of the faith. Priceless originals are stored in a special strong room, designed to withstand natural disasters and to provide long-term protection from all manner of environmental hazards. These documents are made available as needed for research and scholarship. In the Office of Public Information, informative display areas greet the visitor providing a suitable environment in which to welcome and inform visiting dignitaries, guests, and journalists. Israeli leaders found their way to the site, including Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, Foreign Minister Shimon Peres, and dignitaries from around the world. The Prime Minister signed documents for a new town planning scheme that not only protects the terraces, but reshapes the city in order to enhance their beauty and prestige. The plan calls for renovation of the entire length of Ben Gurion Avenue, from the port to the base of the terraces. Of particular interest is the renovation and preservation of the German Templar colony, situated along Ben Gurion Avenue at the base of the terraces. German Templars arrived in 1868. This is the year that Baha'u'llah arrived here. So it's really the restoration is done to the period of Baha'u'llah. And now we have the majestic path of the king starting from the sea and reaching right up to the top of the Mount Carmel. And as you go toward the shrine, all the lines, the rhythm, colors of the landscape invite you, direct you to the center of the Nile concentric circle, which is the shrine of the Lord. Carved stone stairways, balustrades, urns, statuary and fountains began to appear. In our design, uh, details are very important. 
the terraces, for example, are full of uh, small details, very small details that maybe uh, it will not be immediately noticed, but it adds a flavor, it adds fragrance, it adds, it touches the heart of the mist, add to the story. For example, the color seasons that we have. We have a season, right now is red season. Then we have blue season, we have purple season. These together add flavor to the complex. This entire mountain now beckons humanity to investigate the spirit which emanates from this beauteous place. By day, the terraces are a sea of color. At night, 2,000 lights memorialize the suffering of Obad in the dark prison cell of Naku. The arcs of light suggest nine concentric circles emanating from the shrine of Obad, revealing the shapes of 19 terraces. They are acclaimed in Israel as the eighth wonder of the world. Some 3,500 Baha'is from more than 200 countries and territories have been gathering here for this historic event. Mount Carmel is very important for the uh, Baha'is and also for other religions. It's a very holy mountain. The Baha'is are coming from all over the world for the opening of these terraces uh, with the uh, teaching that we are one. I think it will be a chance for the world to see if they will look at the oneness of humankind. This thing is for the people of the world. It's not only for the Baha'is. It's for the people of the world, because the world is conditioned to know that they really need peace. And what I appreciate very much is that on this, on this unique and historic occasion, uh, there are, um, let's start with the composers. You have the composers coming uh, from east and west. You have Talib Shahidi from Tajikistan, and you have Lasse Torresen from Norway, and you have the orchestra being, of course, from the Haifa city itself, the choir coming from Romania, and the soloist, uh, the vocal soloist coming from Canada, and the violin soloist from Vienna. I think this re represents unity and diversity. Well, for me, there are kind of interplay here between things I have in my mind. When I start to compose the piece, I'm searching my spirit for some some music that wants to be written. My dream is that we will uh, be able to promote and to take Haifa experience as, uh, as, uh, as a pilot to the other places in this region. Uh, you know, it is, not, uh, it is not an easy period of time that we are going through, and hopefully that we will be able to demonstrate that it is possible to live together, despite a lot of problems, to live together and uh, to, to let live and let live. And now, live from Haifa, Israel, the opening of the terraces of the Shrine of the Bar, featuring a world premiere of Terraces of Light, an oratorio based on the Tablet of Carmel by Baha'u'llah, composed by Lassa Thorison, and O Queen of Carmel, a cantata in three parts, composed by Tulib Shahidi. This evening's music will be performed by the Israel Northern Symphony of Haifa, Stanley Sperber conductor, and the Transylvania State Philharmonic Choir of Cluj, Romania, Daniel Grotze, conductor. Future performers are Patricia Green, Master Soprano, Stuart Al Tenor, Red Polyanski, Baritone, and Gijon Fabricel, Violinist.
honorable ministers, honorable justices, excellencies, distinguished guests, and Baha'i participants from all parts of the world. On behalf of the Universal House of Justice, the international governing body of the Baha'i faith, I welcome you to the official opening of the terraces of the Shrine of the Bab. We welcome all who have come from near and far to join us on this auspicious occasion for the Baha'is of the world. We acknowledge with deep appreciation the presence of so many distinguished guests. A century and a half have passed since that unspeakable tragedy in the northwest of Persia when the Bab faced the volley fired at him from the rifles of 750 soldiers. The soldiers had followed the orders of the highest authority in the land. The Bab's mangled body was then thrown on the side of a moat outside the city, abandoned to what his cold-blooded persecutors thought would be a dishonorable fate. They had hoped thus to put an end to the growing influence of his teachings on masses of people throughout the country. These masses had accepted, in the face of intense persecution, the Bab's claim to prophethood, and their lives were being transformed spiritually and morally as he prepared them for what he said was the dawn of a new age in which a world civilization would be born and flourish. The expectations that stirred countless hearts were heightened even more sublimely by the Bab's announcement that one greater than he would soon arise, one who would reveal the unparalleled character of the promised world civilization that would signify the coming of age of the entire human race. The turmoil and crises of our time underlie a momentous transition in human affairs. Simultaneous processes of disintegration and integration have clearly been accelerating. Our Earth has contracted into a neighborhood no one can seriously deny. The world is being made new. There is a light at the end of this tunnel of change, beckoning humanity to the goal destined for it according to the testimonies recorded in all the holy books. This is the day in which God's most excellent favors have been poured out upon man, the day in which his most mighty grace has been infused into all created things. Let the word go forth then from this sacred spot, from this mountain of the Lord, that the unity and peace of the world are not only possible, but inevitable. Their time has come.
this morning, some 3,500 Baha'is, representing all parts of the globe, are gathering at the base of Mount Carmel for a program of devotions and song. Afterwards, they will climb the stairway up through the terraced gardens to the shrine of the Baha. sur celles que Dieu vous a envoyées. Cela, puissiez-vous le sentir, sera meilleur pour vous que toute la création. Mediante el cual fueron puestos al descubierto los corazones de tus elegidos y reunidos todos los que estaban en el cielo y todos los que estaban en la tierra. Pasimo Бог отличил тебя устами Господа твоего, Баба, чей светлый лик озаряет ныне и призна все сотворение. It behooves each one of you to manifest the attributes of God and to exemplify by your deeds and words the signs of His righteousness, His power and glory. Has he not in past days caused Abraham, in spite of his seeming helplessness, to triumph over the forces of Nimrod? Has he not enabled Moses, whose staff was his only companion, to vanquish Pharaoh and his hosts? Has he not established the ascendancy of Jesus, poor and lowly as he was in the eyes of men, over the combined forces of the Jewish